Today I want to show you a lightweight hiking kit that I put together that will get you through any situation on the trail. So stick around. I'm out hiking around today. Um, it is a super hot, sticky evening, and I wanted to take you through a lightweight survival kit that I put together specifically for hiking, and it's all centered around the Grail water bottle filter. These things are excellent, and I want to show you why exactly I love the Grail and why it is becoming a staple in my hiking backwoods bags and kits. And I'm going to show you everything that I carry in this bag right here. There's enough stuff in this bag that will get you through any kind of emergency situation when you're out on the trail. And even if you have to spend the night on the trail, um, especially for the summer months in the eastern woodlands, this kit is geared for it, it will work perfectly, but maybe there's some things that you can apply to your area and your time frame, and hopefully that'll help you decide what you need to take when you're out and about. So the kit I've put together today is all based in this Maxpedition Jumbo. Uh, the Jumbo has been around for a very, very long time. Um, this is one of the versions that they came out with. I'm not sure if they make this particular version, but they are still producing the Maxpedition Jumbo. They're still selling them. You can still find them on eBay. Um, good friend of mine gave me this one. Um, fantastic lightweight hiking bag for sure. Um, it's even great for urban EDC, carrying it around town. Um, but what I like about it is in the summer months, and I've talked about this in other videos, haversacks and shoulder bags for me work really well in the summer because um, they're not overheating my back. Um, they're easy to take on and off. And it also kind of uh, limits me to the amount of stuff I can carry so I'm not over carrying a bunch of gear and that really was the point of putting this video together is to show you that you can put together a very lightweight capable survival kit for hiking in the summer their bottle uh, this is the ultra press which I think is the smaller one that they make it's the I think it's like 16 something ounces I'll have specs below but if you haven't used grails before um, they are really well suited towards hiking and day trips and travel. Um, not so much for extended backpacking trips because they are heavy and they don't filter a lot of water at once, but um, for emergency survival situations like this when you're out hiking and you may have to spend the night and you don't want to uh, you know, be hauling a ton of water with you, and you know there's water sources in the area, the Grail does perfect for that. Now, I'm going to show this in the video um, of how this thing works, how to fill it, and how quickly it, it filters water. So I have this disgusting frog pond for my water source, and getting to clean water, it's going to be a little bit of a chore. There's not a lot close by without me getting in it. There's this little puddle here, but you can see it's very, very muddy. So ideally, it would be good to do some pre-filtering with this. Of course, there is all kinds of ooby goobies floating around and mosquitoes. I'm going to press that through. Nice and slow. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but look at the clear water that's coming out of this. That muddy mess that I got this water out of is completely filtered through and now it's safe to drink. There, see there, there's all that silt and that mud. So then what I need to do is, I need to take this off. I need to rinse this in clean water when I get back home 
and make sure that this is all good and clean. Let that air dry and I should be ready to go again. Um, let's go through some of the survival items that I've got packed in here. A couple things that go in every kit, no matter where I'm at, I'm always going to have um, a Bic lighter and some Blistex or maybe some Burt's Bees, some kind of lip balm. Uh, chap lips suck and starting a fire is essential. So having ready to go items like this um, that I can get to quickly are really important. And up here, I have um, a new headlamp that I just got and I've started testing um, and I've been really impressed with this thing. Um, headlamps are so important and um, so much better than flashlights when you're out in the woods hiking around and I think I found my ultimate headlamp. This is, this is the Phoenix HW50R. Um, it's a very lightweight uh, headlamp. You're able to charge it via USB um, but the thing is uh, it's very bright. It has just the settings that I need, not too many. And what it has, what I consider probably one of the best features on a headlamp is a red light mode. I talk about this all the time in all my videos. There is just something fantastic about red light that it doesn't kill your night vision, uh, especially when you're trying to do any kind of land navigation, map reading. Uh, it, it just helps with that. And of course, if you're in any, any kind of stealth situation, red light um, is the way to go. And this has that in it, and it also has blinking capabilities, so there is some signaling capabilities. But what I like about this is, take this off the headband, and now I have a small mini flashlight that I can use as a task light. Um, and if I don't want to use the rechargeable battery, if I'm not mistaken, this will take a standard CR123 battery, which is a fantastic choice uh, for headlamps and flashlights. Way better than a AAA or a AA. A couple of items that I like to have with me, of course, um, is some type of first aid kit. And it doesn't have to be extensive. You need something that's going to stop minor cuts and bleeds, um, scratches, punctures, things like that. Um, so having a variety of Band-Aids, uh, alcohol prep pads, um, some iodine pads to clean the wound and sterilize it, a little bit of tape. Um, of course, I think it's really important to have um, some gauze pads. Gauze pads with good tape is going to be able to um, cover up and protect um, large scrapes. So if you're doing, if you fall and scrape up a knee or an elbow, you've got something that you can cover that with and keep it clean and control the bleeding. Um, also, if you have blisters, uh, that helps with that. You can tape that over a blister. Along with the items in my first aid kit, I have um, this little tick identification card. Not sure where I've got this at, but I think uh, looks like I got this at Ohio State University. Um, but this is pretty handy just to tell kind of what's on you, what you maybe been bitten by. And then, of course, in the summer months, um, you really want uh, a decent pair of tweezers. And the little Leatherman tool here has a really nice set of metal tweezers and a pair of scissors so I can cut gauze or tape. So this goes And another great multi-purpose item is some type of duct tape. Um, this can be utilized for making bandages, for treating blisters. You can cover the, your heels of your foot with a little bit of gauze pad and create a nice cushion um, to protect your feet if you are um, experiencing blistering when you're hiking. Um, I love this duct tape now because it's blaze orange, so it's uh, definitely um, something that can be used to uh, even in a signaling application, but for the life of me, I cannot remember where I got this thing, and I've had it for a while. Um, but I think if you look around, you should be able to find something similar to this. And uh, if, I, if I find something, I'll put a link down for you. But one item that I have shown and talked about in other videos, other kits, um, is a really great multi-purpose piece of gear that is very inexpensive, super easy to find. And that is the Walmart uh, emergency blue tarp. 
It is a nylon cloth, so it's not the noisy, heavy, you know, uh, traditional nylon tarps that you find at Walmart. I think it's around five by seven, which is just right um, <clears throat> for hanging it as a lean-to or even creating an A-frame shelter. Um, so it's enough to get you out of the weather, the rain. Um, and what I like to use it for uh, primarily is I use it as a ground cloth all the time, lay it down um, if I want to sit on the grass somewhere, uh, if I want to lay out stuff to look at, I can do that. So that's what I'm going to use it today for. I'm going to put this on the ground and so I can start laying out contents of this, of this kit and show you in a little bit more detail. But these things are super cheap. I mean, I think they're like nine something maybe or 10. I, I can't remember exactly, but they're not expensive. And I've been able to find these at pretty much all the Walmarts that I go to in my area. So, and if you can't find them at the store, just go to walmart.com, order them online. Uh, they are available, but um, you know, this size of tarp folds down to nothing. I mean, it fits in this bag. And what's nice about it is it does have grommets. Now, is this the most tough waterproof tarp out there? No, it's not. Um, but if you get one, spray it down with some silicone spray, treat the seams, you can reinforce the eyelets if you want to, um, but then you have a very nice lightweight option. Bandana is always a helpful item to have. Uh, multiple uses, we all know that. Helps with water filtration, helps with blood control. If you're bleeding, wipes the sweat off your brow. And of course, orange is a great choice because then you can use this as a signaling flag if you do get stranded in the woods. So we've got that. Food. Now, in most situations, food is not really that important. And it's a little overemphasized by some people, but if you're hiking, you're gonna need calories because you're gonna be expending a lot of sweat and energy and you're going to need food and food does not have to be very complex um, just some beef jerky some meat sticks and some energy protein bars is all you need um, and you don't need a lot of it but this is enough trail snacks for for a day out and then if i do get stuck overnight there's probably enough in here that's going to at least um, help of course with this blue tarp i need a way of securing it to a tree, setting it up. So I have 550 cord, but I also carry bank line. Uh, this little card here, I believe I got this from Tough Possum Gear. Um, these are great for winding up your bank line and keeping it all secure and in one location. So now I've got a way of setting up my tarp and making a nice shelter if I have to spend the night. Land navigation super important uh, this is just a very basic base plate compass i have a pencil i have a notebook but i also have some grid readers that go with this notebook this is from se knives i always like to carry a spork no matter where i go no matter what the situation is you just never know when you're going to have the um, ability to steal somebody's food or snacks um, but uh, you'll see why i have a spork with this kit because it is going to come in handy and then just um, a ballpoint pen, but probably one of the most um, talked about items, a lot of kits, of course, is tools and knives. As outdoors people, we love our knives. I love knives. I have hundreds of knives. And, um, but for a lightweight summer hiking kit, you don't really need a super big blade. This uh, Victorinox Ranger Grip, um, is plenty big enough to do most tasks that I would need it to do um, for an overnight in the woods. And what's great about it is it has a couple tools that a lot of the other smaller Swiss Army knives don't have. It has a really nice, decent sized saw, as well as, of course, the complement of can and bottle openers and screwdrivers tools. Another item that's super important um, is having some way of thermoregulating your temperature, keeping your body heat um, 
contained, keeping you warm in case you do get caught in a storm, a rainstorm. Um, there, there is always these tragic cases of people out hiking in the summertime. They're in flip-flops and shorts and t-shirts, and then a cold front moves through, uh, torrential downpour. Now they are wet. They can't get back to where they needed to go. They end up spending the night in the woods, and sometimes they pass away because uh, they cannot regulate their, their heat. They're losing heat rapidly. Their, their skin is cold and wet. And even in the summertime, this can happen. Um, it's happened, uh, there was a case in Missouri that was very tragic that happened. So it does happen. And one of the items that we can have in our kits is a survival blanket, but this one from SOL is probably one of the better ones um, because it's a little bit larger. Uh, it is in a resealable package and it is windproof and waterproof. So it's a fantastic item. There's no reason not to have this in your hiking kit. Now this item I'm pretty excited to show you guys because I think this is really the heart of uh, the survival kit besides that grail. Um, you know, having a metal container is super important. Um, you know, we all, we're all familiar with the, the five C's, the 10 C's, um, and, um, and how the metal container um, is an item that does all many things for us. It gives us the cook to purify water and to even create char material. And um, I found this tin on Amazon. I've been super happy with it because it really fit a need um, that um, I've been looking for something that is lightweight, uh, big enough to hold a variety of small items, survival type items, but something that I could actually cook on. And um, I'm going to cut in some video of actually me using this with an SPIT stove. It worked fantastic. Uh, this kit um, is very easy to find, um, inexpensive. It is an anodized aluminum, so for an emergency situation, it's fine. It doesn't weigh a lot, but it fits in this hiking bag perfectly. perfectly. And what's nice about it is it does have a handle. So now I can put that over a fire and get that off of the fire pretty easily. It has a lid, which helps with boiling but that lid can also be turned into a skillet. But what's great about this kit is it holds a ton of stuff. And when we're talking about survival gear and survival kits, this is what you want. You don't want the little tiny Altoids tin kit that everybody used to put together back in the day. You want a mess tin and you want it full of good stuff that's gonna help you. And I've got all kinds of cool stuff in here. So first thing right off the bat, a nice quality ferro rod with an orange lanyard so I can find it if I drop it. And of course, with a ferro rod, you need a means of striking it. Well, with this Swiss Army knife in particular, the saw blade is a great way to strike a ferro rod and let me show you real quick so there's the saw now you got to be careful because if you put too much pressure on it that saw is going to come back and close on you but if you don't you don't have to really put a ton of pressure to get it going and if you do it more towards the back of the mechanism it should do fine but look at the sparks that come off of that the back of that saw and i'm not putting a lot of pressure on it so those two items together you can get a fire going and of course, with the ferro rod, you should have some means of getting a fire going with some man-made materials. Now, there, in here is a variety of stuff that I've, I've tested and used over the years. I've got uh, these little tabs um, from Black and White Firestarter, a uh, good company. Um, and they are kind of a petroleum-based, resin-based uh, cotton. Um, I also have some of these quick tenders that you find in a lot of different survival kits. I think these might be from SOL. Um, and then, of course, the fire tape, which is basically just a piece of uh, paper material that has been impregnated with uh, kind of a wax um, accelerant. So you take off a piece of this, you scrape it with your knife and hit it with a spark and it will start a fire. So I have several different ways of getting uh, wood going to start a campfire. 
Now, even though I'm carrying a Grail, I am going to carry some Whirl Bags and uh, water purification tablets. Um, I prefer the Ketodyne tablets. I think they work the best, um, and they they tend to hold up really well um, in a kit. They don't deteriorate very quickly. So fill up one of these with some water, drop in a tab, let it set for an hour or so, and you've got um, some purified water. Another thing you need to think about, of course, um, is signaling. Now, I've, I've mentioned this before, uh, signal mirrors are kind of an interesting thing to have in a survival kit, especially here in the eastern United States where there is just tons and tons of woodland. Um, these are not very effective. You have to be out in an opening to signal to aircraft. Aircraft and helicopters and planes are not deployed very often in Ohio um, for search missions. That just doesn't happen. Uh, it has to be a pretty big situation for something like that to occur. But a signal mirror can be used um, to signal uh, person to person. So I can, if I'm, if I can see the sun and I can get catch the sun with this, I could potentially uh, signal to someone who is hiking towards me, who's looking for me. So I can use it as a ground to ground signal. A little bit of emergency teepee, not a bad item to have. Uh, wire, now wire is an interesting item to carry. You have to know how to use it if you're gonna do snares and that's really not something I would worry about too much in most situations. But also it is a fantastic repair item. Um, and you can hang things over fires, you can repair boots with the soles come loose. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of different things you can do with wire, so there's no reason not to have a little bit of wire with you. Um, another item um, that I've put together and I like to carry is um, some of this uh, Kevlar thread and then a couple good sized needles and of course some safety pins. That way if I have to repair my pants after I've torn them, you know, falling down or something, I can do that. Um, of course, if it was a really horrible, horrible emergency and I had to sew myself up, I guess I could do that. I certainly wouldn't want to, um, but uh, that that's a possibility, I guess. Um, I think sometimes we've watched a little too many Rambo movies in the 80s and it, we think we're going to sew up wounds and most people don't know how to do that and probably don't want to do that because the risk of infection is, is really high. A couple of comfort items that I carry. Since I have this uh, kit to boil water and cook, I put, on, put some bouillon cubes. Um, these are calories, they are salt, they are good to have. Um, making a broth at night to keep you warm if you do get cold. And then of course a morale booster is some instant coffee. Uh, Folger still makes these little singles. So throw these in my kit. Of course a whistle, super important. This is another SOL item. This is their Slim Rescue whistle. Um, these are great whistles. They don't take up a lot of room. Um, they always work. So definitely have a whistle in your kit for signaling. This is about the only wire saw that I have been using that actually, I think, does a good job. Um, this is from Five Call, Five Call Survival Supply. Uh, these, I think, are found in some of the military aviation kits. But there's actual teeth on this thing. It's not just a piece of wire. Um, and if they're used correctly, they do work um, in a pinch. I wouldn't want to cut a lot of wood with them, but if you need to get something, a bigger piece of wood, you have that capability. Good old storm matches. Um, UCO uh, storm matches are fantastic. You can find these all over the place, um, and they make these flat packs that you can buy that fit into kits perfectly. Uh, here's an item that I just picked up recently, and I have not had a chance to experiment with this yet, but I, I've seen good results with these. This is from, uh, I think, Grim Survival Tools, and this little item actually has the ability to take found uh, plastic water bottles and turn them into cordage. So this is going to cut the, the, the water bottle as you pull it through and create long, thin pieces of plastic cordage. 
Um, I need to do an experiment with these and actually show this in action because I think uh, I think a lot of people would be interested in this. But I think it's a cool little item to throw into a survival kit. So further testing on this coming soon. A uh, little signal panel. This is, um, I believe, another military issue type thing for aircraft survival. And then a small uh, magnifying glass, so I can actually use that to start a fire if I have to, but also it's great for map reading and uh, looking at um, small cuts or ticks or things like that, getting stuff like that removed. It comes in pretty handy. And then I always like to have some ability to maintain a knife blade. I think this is the from Easy Lap or something like that. It's the it's a sharpening card, so it's a diamond um, card, and I think this is like the medium grit. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, get out there, uh, put together your kit, start hiking around with it, see what you like. If you're a backpack kind of person, that's fine. Use a backpack if that's if what you gravitate towards. Of course, there's some really great hydration backpacks that can, you know, have the ability to carry a lot of water, but make sure you have some type of way of filtering water with water that you've found in the area, because that's gonna be key. And make sure you have some type of way of covering yourself and doing that thermal regulation that we talk about so you don't get caught in the rain and get yourself cold and, and then eventually expire. We don't want that to happen. There's no reason to. You have the ability to make yourself safe. You are the only person who is responsible for yourself, so you need to take that responsibility seriously and um, get out there and enjoy yourself. So as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. Really appreciate it. Make sure you check out the affiliate links down below. A lot of good stuff down there. Uh, preparedwander.com, lots of information. Um, if you are interested in supporting the channel, one way you can do that is by purchasing a Prepared Wanderer patch. We have the new um, orange and black patches. We, these were the original patches that I started with. I ran out of those. They've been uh, very popular. People really love these and have been asking for them. I finally got new ones in stock. They are in the Big Cartel site. Link down below for that. Also stickers and then of course the subdued uh, tan and green patches are available as well. Um, and then uh, check out the Facebook group. That is uh, over 10,000 members right now. Um, it is growing leaps and bounds, lots of content, lots of people sharing, and I would love to invite you there to come and, and share some of your information as well. So check that out, links down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.